GMAT Pay is one of the most widely used LAM package available in ROS. Some of the other packages that GMapping is compared with are Core Slam, Graph Slam, Hector Slam, Filter Base Slam, etc. GMapping is implemented based on the RAW something particle filters. This approach uses a particle filter in which each particle carries an individual map of the environment. The number of particles is reduced using several adaptive techniques to learn the grid maps. Gmapping proposes an approach to compute an accurate proposal distribution taking into account not only the movement of the robot but also the most recent observation. This drastically decreases the uncertainty about the robot's pose in the prediction step of the filter. Don't worry, you do not need to know how particle filters work. Using G-mapping is actually very easy and that's what we'll talk about now. The input data it mainly needs is the raw laser scan data and the odometry. This is used by the SLAM algorithm to estimate the robot pose with respect to the odome and provides the map to odome link as an output. The other crucial output is a map or a 2D occupancy grid or a representation of the environment displaying the obstacles and the free space. This map can be saved using the map server ROS package and used for navigational purposes. It also needs a few transforms. So firstly, do note that the base link is a very commonly used frame to refer to the robot base frame and is usually at the center of the robot. The laser link is at the origin of the laser sensor which could be mounted anywhere on the robot but maintains a static relationship to the base link. Now the laser scan provides distances based on the time of flight technique and hence the distance between the robot and the surroundings might seem to change if the position of the LiDAR changes. And as this data is being used by the ROS node to not just compute the map but also estimate the robot position, the relationship between these two links becomes a crucial piece of input. The odom frame, base link and map are initialized at the same point at the beginning of the G-mapping process. Laser sensors and the wheel encoders are used to estimate the base link to odome transform. Along with the construction of map, G-mapping also keeps track of coordinate frames over time. Parameters such as wheel slippage, robot speed, frequency of map update, etc. can produce a noisy odometry resulting in discontinuous and distorted map. G-mapping performs corrections by continuously merging measurements from previous positions and provides the updated map to odom link. This results in a reliable map to base link and hence a non-distorted and continuous map. Let's take a quick look at the screen recording of the process when we perform this mapping. As you can see here, G-mapping creates the studio occupancy grid like a building floor map from the laser and pose data collected by the mobile robot, where the environment is discretized into a matrix of cells, where each cell is assigned a value that represents the probability that the cell is occupied by an obstacle. In the fourth video of the Robotics Pico Degree series, you will find this implementation of G-mapping on our custom Stark robot. The link of the video is given in the description. In the G-mapping video, we tell you about Stark robot in the VBOT simulator using a keyboard and create our own map of a home using the LiDAR data, GPS and IMU mounted on the robot. We publish the base link and LiDAR link using TF Broadcaster package. The generated map is saved in a file and used in the further videos of the series for navigation and obstacle avoidance. You can then use the process to create a map of your own custom world. 
Do comment if you have any doubts or concerns.